It is November 24th. Friday, November 24th, 2023. Day after Thanksgiving. I hope everyone who celebrates had a good Thanksgiving. And even if you don't, I just hope you had a good Thursday. This is the one uh, miraculous day where the day of Silent Hill Ascension and the day of the month are in alignment. It's Silent Hill Ascension Day 24, and it's November 24th. And it's immediately going to be ruined when there's no new episode tomorrow or Sunday, since they just changed the schedule to no longer air on weekends. But oh well. It's a sign. It's a withering. A withering. It's only in alignment in America, so it doesn't count. Well, they only air it live in more average American time zones. So it's clear that that's the only audience Genvid really gives a shit. Yeah, exactly. That's all. That's the only part of the world that Genvid cares about. As we all know, internet is an American territory. What's up, Tassadul? Hey, Hirimi. Hirimi, by the way, thank you so much for the 61 months. Very much appreciate the support, man. Oh, right. We were supposed to get pickles. Good message. Want to come to a party? There's going to be pickles. If I get them. Hey, Sinistar. Hey, Pan. Hey, Ashlyn. What's up, Stevo? Donatus. Phantom Cigar. Raven Black. Christophonix. Gaddius. King Kane. Funkadelic. Keith G. Yeah, it really has been 24 days of this. Yesterday was the first day where there was not any new Ascension episode. Uh, since Halloween. Because day one premiered uh, Halloween night. And it's been every single day since then. And I have not missed a single day of streaming it. <laughs> Yesterday was my first day off since the day before Halloween. It was nice. It was nice. It was nice not having to think about it for, for a day. That was a much-needed break. Hey, Jed Ashtalin. Hope you also had a great Thanksgiving. And we're still going to try and do, I guess, a Friendsgiving at some point. I know Tiny Wolf doesn't feel good, so probably not this Sunday, but, you know, eventually. We can just do it in December. It'll be fine. Hey, Nat20. Hey, Brockwurst. But uh, let's get into the biggest Silent Hill Ascension news of the day. Um, we have several choices, several uh, votes currently. This is the most important one. This is the final fate, I guess, of Toby or, or possibly Rachel. Toby will either die or kill Rachel. I don't know. I'm sure something stupid will happen and they won't actually kill off either of these characters. 
no matter how final this fate seems to be. But I was looking through these leaderboards. This one's the Damnation Path, 40% currently in the lead. I was looking through and I saw some familiar names. We've been seeing Sven Guli spend lots and lots of points on lots of decisions. But look who's that. Right underneath Sven Guli in fifth place. It's Tassadul. Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite Silent Hill Ascension actor. Tassadul. Our local Norwegian friend. I just thought that was funny. You see Britty in the leaderboards a lot too. Do you think that person made a whole new account because they're such a Brit fan? Even though we haven't even seen Brit yet. <laughs> Rachel's blood was bad, so she needs to be punished. Toby recovered the blight fetish. The blighted fetish. Which revealed to Xavier that Toby is the source of the withering. A withering? Xavier told him the only way to stop it and save everyone is for Toby to subject himself to a foundation-severing ritual that he will not survive. What will Toby do with the opportunity to possibly end the turmoil in Hope's Junction for good? Turn it against Rachel. And this ends in three days. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be a while before we get to see this outcome. Yeah, they they, Xavier specifically called it a blight fetish. The name of the episode was blight fetish. Um, this is the first time someone referred to it as blighted fetish. But we've already seen that they fuck up these descriptions right here. Your, your context descriptors for your choices. We've, we've already seen multiple instances where this, this is not accurate. Like this is not correct. So it's probably some intern who has to type this up and uh, change it out every day. And they probably don't, uh, <laughs> they probably don't follow the story. Xavier has ordered Rachel to get her husband Eric out of his, out of his relationship with Toby in an effort to make sure Toby goes through with the severing ritual. Rachel knows that her husband will resist turning his back on his friend. How will she make sure he obeys? I I still don't understand how this is a thing. Like, Toby and Eric absolutely fucking hate each other. They're, they've never done anything in the story to even somewhat resemble that they are friends. Outside of blatant character dialogue writing where they say that they're friends but they never act like it I don't see how this is supposed to be like a difficult thing to make happen and people are saying ask for his trust how will Rachel get Eric to end his friendship with Toby this ends in 42 minutes that's today's episode right 40 minutes so we might see the outcome of that in today's episode and people are going with ask for his trust that's such a all right first of all that's such a boring response like how will rachel get eric to end his friendship with toby toby did a horrible thing toby threw a molotov like into a, a crowded room full of full of the foundation including rachel and eric um this this is the more like real true to the story option, I guess. B 
because Toby did do a horrible thing. And Rachel explaining that, like, Rachel wouldn't, shouldn't even have to explain that to Eric. This shouldn't be a choice in the first place. Eric was there. He saw what happened. Eric has been punched in the face by Toby. Toby has thrown a fucking Molotov cocktail into his church. At this point, like, you're not friends. You shouldn't need Rachel to convince you, to trust you, or threaten to leave, like, This is so dumb. You chose threaten because chaos? I mean, it is pretty chaotic to throw points away on a choice that's absolutely not going to win. You do you. What will Toby do for the severing? Will he sacrifice himself? Will he flee town? He's already tried. Like, what are these options? We watched a whole fucking episode of him trying to flee town. And very clearly, he cannot. He tries to leave and he winds up exactly back where he was. Like, there's, you're not, you can't run away. This option doesn't work. He got his ass beat for it. Exactly. Maybe he would just get beaten to death by random people who see him as a monster if you try to run away again. I kind of feel like no matter what, Toby dies. I kind of feel like overall, if you go with sacrifice himself, Toby will die and just be more accepting of it. If you try to flee town, people will see Toby as a monster and just beat the shit out of him and he'll die. If you try to turn it against Rachel, I think the other Foundation members will step in and defend Rachel. Or Rachel will kill Toby. Or Eric will kill Toby. I think no matter what, Toby's fucking dead. Isn't his hope really low too? Uh, yes. Wait, isn't there a way to, uh, yeah. His hope's very low. And his redemption meter is full. So he's probably going to sacrifice himself. Right? Well, no, because that's not the thing that's in the lead. Uh, turning it against Rachel is by like half a million so I don't know we'll see where that goes in three days I guess <laughs> he's been doomed with slider puzzles is that his thing right now no he's got shapeshifter Astrid is getting fucked by uh, slider puzzles right now No way it's going to be the end if he's supposedly the cause. I mean, I I assume he's not actually the cause. Or there's, there's multiple reasons for the withering. Because they have to write this so that it lasts the same amount of time no matter what. And we saw the breakdown on the Martin Montgomery interview uh, during last week's dev stream. Um... We saw the story break down, and we saw, like, it branches, it seems like it branches out a lot from the start, but then it ultimately just comes down to, like, one of two endings. So, a lot of stuff is going to be... A lot of the major plot points can't really shift around too much. If, they're, if their writing is structured that way. So convenient that Toby's hope got affected while the others didn't. I mean, none of this shit works the way that it's supposed to. The endure sections don't work the way they're supposed to. The devs have already had to, like, quote unquote, manually adjust hope levels multiple times. 
Hideo Kojima isn't isn't banned as a username. They're currently spamming Shady. Oh, with multiple uh, Kojima accounts as well. One underscored and uh, one not. Good shit. It's probably the real Kojima. Well. Let's give him a hand. Let's give him an extra shady. Community showing what they think about this shit? Yeah. What else do we got as choices? What else to discuss? How will Rachel get Eric to end his friendship with Toby? Tell him you've never been friends in the first place. Uh, what will Toby do for the severing ritual? I guess we'll find out in three days. So far, it looks like he's going to try and turn it against Rachel. How will Astrid eulogize her mother? Are you googly? How will she read her you googly? Astrid has been put in the uncomfortable position of, de of delivering a eulogy for her abusive mother, Ingrid. She must figure out what to say about a woman she has deeply complicated feelings about. In front of a group of family and friends made up of both Ingrid's victims and supporters. I thought she didn't have supporters. I thought everyone fucking hates the Johansons no matter what including many members of their own family. Also, deeply complicated feelings would have been a nice subject to tackle, like reading a eulogy for your abusive mother that you have deeply complicated feelings about. That could be an actual, like, good premise to express through narrative and character dialogue and interactions to be something emotional. Uh, what we got was Astrid having a vision of her mother uh, grabbing her by the throat and going yeah, like Skeletor. So way to do it. Way to, way to way to knock it out of the park with your characters handling their deeply complicated feelings. What will Carl do with Ingrid's ring? I put on my James Sunderland cock ring. Anyone remember that from day one? When the chat still worked? That was one of the pinned messages on day one when people could still type in chat. And someone someone typed, I put on my James Sunderland cock ring. And like pinned it to the chat. What will Carl do with Ingrid's ring? Searching through Ingrid's belongings, Carl found an old piece of jewelry and Meta identified it as their mother's wedding ring. Meta believes the ring should be in her possession, but Carl recalled that Ingrid wanted Astrid to have it. I'll have to decide the true owner of this important family heirloom. Who cares? Like, actually, who cares? I guess we'll find out in 34, 30 minutes. Wait, the episode's in 30 minutes. The cutoff is 34. Four minutes. What is with these timers and stuff? So just gotta ask because I know nothing about this. Is game progression timed then goes live when the countdown runs down? I'm not sure I understand Werewolf. It's not a game. It, it's, a, it's an episodic TV series. Like, we're this is the countdown to today's episode. You're just watching a new episode every day. It's not a it's not a game. There are some very, very limited, mild interactive elements, uh, but they're not directly tied to the story. Like 
There's an endure section that happens after the episode uh, where you watch one of the characters go through a series of sequences and monsters and you do like you can do QTEs on the screen, but it's not tied to the story. Uh, the characters never mention it. They never talk about it. They don't talk about like experiencing that. It's just something for pl like people interacting to get points. And supposedly it also affects the quote, the hope of the characters, which can lead to them dying in the story, but we have not seen any example of that so far in 24 days. Um, and then there are optional puzzles. These also can potentially affect uh, character hope. Yeah, the scenes after the episodes have been exactly the same, with the exception of like one or two things for 24 days. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically, you just go in every once in a while, you can vote on a choice and then whatever choice wins is the thing that happens in the TV show. Um, so pretty much a soap opera. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like a soap opera, except it's like jumping in and watching a soap opera. That's like nine seasons deep already. So all your characters are already established and there's just stuff going on. So if you just jumped into the middle of a soap opera without knowing anything, that's the way this is written. Like everyone keeps talking about shit that's happened in the past or whatever. And it doesn't get explained like as the story goes on. So yeah. Don't know, uh, don't know how much you care about usernames, Nubzombie, but fuck Konami isn't banned either. I don't think they've got any kind of filtering on usernames still. Um, I mean, that's still worth keeping an eye on. It means they're probably still trying to tweak chat filters and account name filters. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna... It doesn't matter that much to me, especially because we're we're not going to really interact with chat hardly at all. <laughs> Drew Carey, welcome to Silent Hill Ascension. Everything is meaningless and the QTEs don't matter. But the points do matter. The points absolutely matter. That's why I, uh, after the stream ended on Wednesday, I spent some time doing puzzles. I usually do this off stream where I go through and actually fucking do the puzzles. Usually when I'm like laying down trying to go to bed and I can't sleep or if I'm, uh, Sitting on the toilet. That's when it's it's perfect ascension time. Buried memories is f fucking horrible. I hate these, and I hate these. Guitar is the worst. Tiles is the second worst. Buried memories is the third worst. Fishing? Fishing is not here right now. Maybe after today's episode. It'll update once the episode's over. So there will be different games. So we might get more fishing. We might get car repair. We might get guitar. Who thinks this will survive the full nine to 10 months? I mean, I really doubt it, but hey, we'll, we'll see. But I feel like if user interaction continues dropping, it'll eventually reach a point where it's just not financially viable for them to keep doing this daily or even Monday through Friday. I thought they were 
actually going to release those with the other five games they have. What do you mean? The games rotate out. Every single day the games rotate out. Like, sometimes you get lockbox. Sometimes you get buried memories. Sometimes you get guitar. Sometimes you get car repair or fishing or shapeshifter or tiles. Like, all of those things have been in the live game, but every day it, it updates and you have a different selection. They've already gotten their money from anyone foolish enough to spend money on this shit early on. Does it really cost them much to keep releasing new videos when it's this badly written, animated, programmed? I mean, that's the thing is they still have to pay, like they're still paying for servers for people to log in and interact with shit and to track everyone's accounts. Like all, all of that costs money. There is, there is a daily amount of money being spent to maintain the upkeep of this. Um, paying for the domain costs money, paying for the servers, like account you know, all the account uh, storage for anyone who's still interacting. Like, all of that stuff is still going to cost money. The thing is, like, the animated portions are all done. The show is done. It's just being drip-fed. They're not still making it. They're not still animating it. They're just releasing scenes based on quote-unquote community choices, allegedly. Um, so, like, if there's not enough user interaction to continue, like, justifying those daily upkeep costs, I could see them canceling this and then just dropping the whole thing as a season or a TV show on Tubi or whatever. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? So they change in the main minigame screen too, not just the hope screen. Uh, right, yeah. These games rotate out, these games rotate out. With this, there's only Stones, Hashi, Codebreaker, Buried Memories, and Lockbox right now. Right? That's it. Yeah. And the only thing that I usually see swapped out is Buried Memories and Lockbox. Codebreaker, Hashi, and Stones are like almost always there. I think they have been there every day. And then these rotate out. So Tiles, Shapeshifter, and Guitar were the three uh, initial mindfulness games. And then recently they added um, car repair and, and, uh, fishing. But, yeah, I've been, I've been trying to go through and actually do puzzles to try and unlock points. I've got 12,000, 12.7,000 saved up for you guys and the whole reason for that is just so i can get cameo tickets which we need to go ahead and get 21 tickets for this one bam 21 tickets out of 2841 entries we got nine boxes to open this is the main thing is so that we can do some some scam point predictions And we've still got like 20 minutes. It's going up again. Um, it's it's weird. They keep changing it. They keep changing it. It's not just a matter of entries. Let me click on the fucking. Oh, I hate this UI. 
Um, it's not just a, a matter of the entries. It's also a matter of how long it's open for. Like this one is ending in 44 minutes. Appearing soon. Sometimes it says appearing tomorrow. Sometimes it says appearing next week. So the values for like how long a thing is open and how many entries there are, like we can't really use that as a gauge anymore because they're constantly changing this description and it's constantly changing the entry values. And these entry values could easily, easily be manipulated on the developer's side, allegedly. Um, they, they can adjust all of these values on their end. So there's no guarantee that we can go by these numbers. Like originally I was thinking we could kind of gauge how many people are interacting with Ascension kind of based on this, but not, not really, not anymore. There's too many variables. It's definitely still not millions like, uh, like they claim. Um, but yeah, let's, I think we can open a couple of boxes now and then maybe do some more after the episode. So if one of my moderators could set up a prediction, let's go ahead and do some what's in the box while we wait on the episode today. Time to play some what's in the box. What's in the fucking box? There it is. Prediction is open. You can use your scam points and try to predict what is in this gift box, in this loot crate. It, it could be a sticker or an emoji. It could be a cosmetic, something wearable by your in-game avatar. A piece of art or flair, like an avatar border, uh, or a loading screen. Or it could be a duplicate item, something that we've already gotten before that winds up saying duplicate and gets exchanged for uh, influence points. Useless junk isn't an option. I guess that would be duplicate. I mean, it's all useless junk. That's kind of the whole point. 5,400 on Art Flare, 4,200 on Duplicate, 11,000 at the last second on Sticker Emoji. Let's see what's in the box. What's in the box? It is a cosmetic, an uncommon avatar hair, red swept back. Is that uh, Ava's hair? All of the cosmetics are taken from models of main characters, I think. <laughs> yeah, nothing about this is swept back. I, I guess this side, kind of, but you still have bangs and stuff in your face. But I think that's Ava's hair, just in red. Although hers looks red, depending on the shitty lighting. 22,000 scam points to Christophonics and four others who correctly predicted. Let's go ahead and run another one. Let's open another box. Let's do another prediction. There it is. New predictions up. Use your scam points to predict what you think is in the box. Is it fair to say this that this is all very low effort? Like all the stuff coming out of the boxes. Everything about this is low effort. Every single thing about Silent Hill Ascension could be described as low effort. All right, 12,100 thinking art and flair, 8,300 on sticker emoji, 1,400 on cosmetic, 1,000 on duplicate. It's a lot of scam points on art and flair, a lot of scam points on sticker emoji.
Where do we pay for cameo tickets in the app? Uh, let me open this box and then I'll show you. There it is. Predictions are in. Let's open box number two. It is a art. Wait. This isn't a duplicate? Okay. Art, flare, rare loading screen, suburbia. I think it's technically a duplicate, but it didn't pop up and say duplicate, which is the rule that we have established. So it is art and flare. It probably has a slight change. I mean, we can look. So let me see if we keep the boxes. Perfect. Perfect. I can I can choose when to open boxes. And then save the others for future what's in the box moments. All right, let's earn a reward. We're about to get a tangled soul from the battle pass. So, cameo tickets for uh Tanoshi. So Tanoshi, the, the main thing right here, see how there's two little diamonds? So you can either swipe uh, this banner to where it says today's cameo contest or click on the little white diamond or the little diamond on the right and it brings up this where it says today's cameo contest and then tap on that and then here in the bottom right is get tickets. It's, it is a really terrible UI. It is a really terrible UI. Yeah, you swipe on mobile, you click and drag on, on browser. But look at this like fade in, fade out transition. You shouldn't do that kind of a transition if you're clicking and dragging. You wanna do like a, a left right sort of transition, you know? You gotta really put some effort into your your transitions between scenes and things that are clickable. And if you're clicking and dragging or swiping to change the page, you should see it like slide to the side. That's satisfying feedback. When it just fades in and out, it makes it really awkward. Looks about the same amount of cameo tickets today as have been. We just talked about that though, Sinistar. Like sometimes it's it like right now it just says appearing soon with no further information. Sometimes it says appearing next week and the entries are open for longer. Sometimes it says appearing tomorrow and it's a much shorter window. So like there's too many variables. We can't go by these numbers anymore. Cause every cameo contest is different. Every single description for it's different. Every window uh, for the contest being open is different. They keep changing it. Hey, Star Garden. This one's been open for two days. Is that right, Meep? Ends in 35 minutes, appearing soon. This says 10 minutes. So is that just for tomorrow? Then why doesn't it just have the usual appearing tomorrow? Because clearly that is going to be open for longer than tonight's episode. None of this shit makes sense, dude. <laughs> this is all so... Like, even if you ignore how terrible everything is like every individual aspect of this is so bad like all the most important things are are completely fucked it's like all right we got an idea for a community driven choose your own adventure horror story 
but we're going to write the story so that nobody cares about the, the characters or the context or the decisions that the community actually makes. And we're going to design the UI so that the feedback for the players is as bad and confusing as possible so that no one actually feels like they're impacting anything. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah, it how, it's going to end. But there won't be cameos tomorrow. There would be cameos Monday. You're right, because there's nothing going on this weekend. So why even have this cameo contest end? Like 33 minutes is such an arbitrary number. It's not going to end soon enough to be a cameo in tonight's episode. And then this weekend, there's going to be nothing. I don't know. It's so stupid. Where's the pre-show? No pre-show. No pre or post show today. They showed that uh, information on the developer stream on Wednesday and Monday when they showed the uh, schedule for the week. No more episodes on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Thanksgiving was off for everyone, and there was no pre- and post-show on today. I don't know if they'll bring pre- and post-show back for next Friday. Probably. Let's go ahead and open another box. Let's do some more what's in the box get some more scam point predictions in predictions up you can now use your scam points for this is PP this interactive scam point prediction to try and predict what is in the Silent Hill Ascension loot box will it be a sticker or an emoji will it be a cosmetic Will it be a piece of art or flair? Or a duplicate item? 12,600 on cosmetic. It's a lot of points. Someone very confident that this one's going to be a cosmetic. Or a few people. 4,300 on sticker emoji. 1,800 on duplicate. Only 10 points on art flair. Just went up to 2,010 points. Someone dropped 2,000 on Art Flair at the last second. Here it is. What's in the box? It's a cosmetic. Epic. Epic. Avatar bottom blue slacks. The epic cosmetic look at those pants can I even wear those these are different blue slacks because these are these are common so it's probably, uh, it's only for body type one. They're epic for body type one. They're epic lady pants, but the male version of the pants is common and they look exactly the same. <laughs> Wonder if the rarity of clothes gives you a better chance at cameos. Considering we've already seen three, like, default characters in the first 24 days of this airing, I don't think so. I don't think so. We've already seen three default characters that have the red ponytail and the white t-shirt.
considering how detailed the avatars are. I'm sorry, I can't even read that with a without fucking laughing. Considering how detailed the avatars are, you can really see why some only fit one body type and some only fit the other. <laughs> True, true. They're just so detailed, and the animations are are so specific and precise that maybe it's just too difficult to model, you know, clothes to work on on both fe uh, female and male models. Don't the Sims have better models? The Sims have way better models. Like, fucking Book of Memories for the Vita. Silent Hill Book of Memories had a better character creator, and that game is hot dog shit. And it's still better than this. It's not a good character creator by any means, but it's still better than this one. Never thought I'd see the day where Book of Memories has been outshined. I was, I was so confident. Like... When I finished, I, I put the clip up, right, on YouTube and on Twitter, and, like, a lot of people have seen the clip by now, but when I finished doing all 500 zones of Book of Memories, I, I literally took my cartridge of it out of my PSTV and melted it on stream. Um, and I was like, okay, we're going to treat this like a ritual for all the new Silent Hill games, because at the time, this was, like, six months before Ascension came out, so... The new games had been announced, but we didn't have any other information about them yet. So I was like, okay, you melted it. Yeah, I I took a Silent Hill brand candle and I melted my cartridge of Book of Memories into a lump of plastic goo because uh, I hated it that much. And I was like, all right, no, there's no way anything could be worse than Book of Memories. And somehow Silent Hill Ascension has managed to completely surpass Book of Memories as being the most terrible Silent Hill thing in, like, every possible way. I mean, it's honestly kind of impressive. It sort of transcends, because, like, normally, if you're talking about bad Silent Hill things, a lot of people separate... Um, the movies and the games, right? You can talk about just the games being bad and people will be like, oh yeah, Book of Memories is terrible. A lot of people hate Homecoming. A lot of people hate Downpour. Honestly, I... Whatever. That's a whole nother discussion. But... And then people will talk about the movies. You know, some people like the first movie, some people don't. Some people... Most people hate the second movie. Um... But this, Silent Hill Ascension, is the worst of all worlds. In in terms of comparing it to other games and things in the franchise, it's worse than the fucking Pachinko Machine. It's worse than the Pachi Slot. It's worse than the Slot Machines. It's worse than the, the mobile games and the play novel. Like, it, it is by far worse than any other of the games. And in comparison with the movies, like, it's also fucking terrible. It's terrible to sit and watch. It's terrible to interact with. This is the worst thing. This is the worst Silent Hill thing. You're the source nub. This one day you burned the cartridge, you started everything. Yeah, I, I started the withering, I'm sorry. I fucked up the ritual, I started a withering. It's fine. It's fine. A withering here. God, I love this loading screen with the halos of the sun. Look at there's Alessa. Remember Silent Hill? You think they'll ever mention it? God, aren't you cold? There's always a chill in this house. Now oh, we got the clown music. What's wrong? Just got off the phone with Hogan. Bloom, bloom. They're releasing Ingrid's body. She's coming home. We'll take care of the funeral. 
You don't have to worry Ingrid's about body it. is coming home. I know what I'm going to do with this. The community finally decided. Should have it. Meta gets it. What about Ostre? Fuck Astre. She's made it clear she doesn't want it. Thank you. I regret. Look at this loving scene between these these two. I regret that I never gave you a ring. These two old flames. I still think about you, you know, about what could have been. <laughs> Me too. It's so flat. Maybe, maybe we would be given a second chance. I think they're happy. Oh, they're gonna kiss. Oh, we can't show that though. We gotta show it from this angle because those models definitely are not colliding correctly. Finally got Faith down. She made me read three foundation fairy tales to her. <laughs> Had to put her in a chokehold. So much of you. What it Rich. I need to talk to you about Toby. Suddenly everyone's smooching. What did he do now? I I don't think you should see him anymore. You're serious? This scene is gonna make understand. me fucking go insane. I was just inducted. Rach, Toby was the first friend I made when I moved to this country. Shut I just up. Need you to trust me. You're not friends. I do, but also you moved this to this country. From? You're. I wish I could tell you more, but I can't. So please, I just need you to trust me and stay away from him, okay? <sighs> okay. Swear it. What? Swear to I me. I want you to swear it. That you won't reach out to Toby. See, swear on what? why is she always like I this? You to swear it on something important. Promising isn't enough? No. Every time the community Fine. tries to go for these Tell redemption no choices with Rachel, swear on the life of like daughter. ask for Rachel. trust, she's never nice about it. She's always a complete okay. bitch. She did the same thing when people voted for her to apologize to Toby. I'm coming, honey. Lone Wolf. Here's the bartender scene. They had a they had a stand-in cameo for the thumbnail. Then I don't have the beer. My friend Eric over there, he'll pay it. If you're good for it, then pay it. Oh, come on. You know I'm good for it. Eric, over here. Is this happening now? Is this a flashback? What's going on? Eric, where have you been? I've been calling you, man. I can't really talk right now. Listen, you gotta help me. I'm in some deep shit. That's why I can't nope, be talking. Nope, this is happening right what now. What do you mean? Whatever trouble you're in, I can't help you. <laughs> Rachel make you tell me that? What? Just another day where Rachel's got you by the balls. Tells her who you can see, who you can talk to. I trust her. You're fucking pathetic. <laughs> Wonderful. Beautiful so animations. Lovely. Excellent performance. Uh. He's hovering off the ground. Toby? Joy? I wanted to hear your voice, I guess. Wait. Joy? Was that finally not a Silent Hill ringtone? I'm so sorry. What what was that little jingle? I know. You could have stopped it though. My addiction, the accident at the mill. But you were always drunk. Those people, this town, died because of you. I know. I know. You can't keep running. You have to make it right. And Toby, please don't hate me. I was happy. Okay. You made me happy, James. Rock bottom, story complete. Dwayne the Rock Johnson's gonna come in and give Toby the rock bottom. Q 
Can't wait. Can't wait for next episode. Can't believe we got to wait until Monday. All right. Uh, moderators, if someone can do a prediction for boss fight, will there be a boss fight? What is this place? God. There it is, boss fight. No! God damn it, I clicked over to chat so that I could open up and watch the prediction as it happens, and when I clicked back in, there was a fucking QTE on the screen. Now I'm gonna fail everything. All I had to do was nothing. I got jabated. All right, now I gotta fucking actually interact with this to get my points. Otherwise, I'm only gonna get 800 points. Hey, Kazakun. Your corpse made it into the Endura section. Congrats. It's impossible to recover, basically. Your best thing to do is do one QTE and leave it in the green or not interact at all and you'll get max points. But see, look, look how little the bar recovered, even with a perfect. Once you're in the failure side, it's basically impossible to get it all the way back. How many times have we seen this cutscene now? About 20. About 20 out of 24 times. No, I haven't had a cameo. Why did that one... It pops up multiple QTEs on the screen again. Where if you're doing one, it'll fail the other one. Fucking love it. Yeah, I'm not in the Silent Hill canon yet. I love hearing the character screams during that scene. They're just so fucking bad. At least, even though this is a repeat, it's always a repeat, at least we get to hear a different character scream each time it's someone else. Dark Souls death screams. Any great lore tonight? I have literally already forgotten. I have already forgotten what we just watched. Like, my brain just tunes it all out at this point. Something something ring. Yeah, Carl and Astrid sat and flatly exchanged dialogue about a ring. 
Carl decided, well, the community decided for Carl that Meta would get Ingrid's ring. Rachel yelled at Eric to stop being friends with Toby. Even though there's absolutely zero reason for them to be friends. Community did not succeed. You did not succeed. Hell yeah. Let's go, community. United by failure. Yeah, I can't wait for Monday's show. And they kissed. They tried to. I only got 800 points. See, man, like, why? Why even bother? I, I misclicked once. I misclicked once at the very start. No boss fight, by the way. So for everyone who predicted nope on the boss fight, Congratulations, 149.8 thousand scam points. Going out to Toxic Dead Cell and 20 others. No, no pre-show or post-show today. They showed that on the schedule on Monday and on Wednesday. That uh, this week... So for everyone who missed the, the schedule update... Silent Hill Ascension no longer has daily episodes. It's only Monday through Friday... So Saturdays and Sundays, there's no longer new episodes. And Thursday, uh, yesterday for Thanksgiving, there was nothing new. So they'll occasionally take off holidays and stuff. And uh, as part of the schedule change for this week, pre-show and post-show is gone from today, but it will be back Friday. So, or excuse me, Monday. Next Friday, we'll probably also be back to normal uh, pre-show and post-show stuff. So. Yeah, for anyone who missed all that, that's that's the big thing that nothing in the story matters right now, but the schedule has changed. So instead of it being every single day, it's only Monday through Friday. And because it's only Monday through Friday, it's going to run for more weeks because it's they're not increasing the amount of minutes per episode to make up for not showing it on Saturday or Sunday. They're still showing the same daily content. So essentially for every month of Monday through Friday episodes, it's going to add one extra week to the overall runtime. So it's running for more weeks now. They're making this last longer. Yes. They're dragging it out even more. But you don't have to log in on Saturday and Sunday. And occasionally holidays. It's fucking stupid. All right, daily catch-up videos, rewards, IP. Mindfulness, what do we have? Fishing! And also guitar, fuck guitar, but fishing! It's time to fish, motherfuckers. This is what we've been waiting for. This is the real game right here. This is the real experience. Get these fucking fish. Oh, get that motherfucking fish. Yeah, Silent Hill fishing. Do it again. Let's get some more epic fish. We're not fishing in Lake Toluca. Silent Hill doesn't exist in this world. Maine doesn't exist in Ascension's world. Pop up a perfect. Perfect fishing. Hmm. 
Look at that epic fish. And we got a battle pass Tangled Souls sticker. And I only got two stars, which means we can play it again. We can fish some more. We can get the, th the three star, the three star Dragon Ball. We can bring Krillin back to life. We need this fucking fish. Damn it. They seriously rate you for time on this while you have a, yeah, you can't skip through that, the graphics or the pop-up or anything. And it's time-based. <laughs> Oops, we got the three star. I clicked right through the reward, but we got it. We caught all the epic fish. I'm a police officer from Brams, the next town over. Reaver, thank you so much for the 43 months. Very much appreciate it. That's a long time of love and support. Thank you so much, man. I'm a police officer from Brames. Time for some guitar. I forget which one is the shortest one. Betrayal? Here we go. We just mute it. Oh no, not the guitar. Here, I'm gonna give everyone a taste of, of the mini game experience since typically I've been doing this off stream. We'll do it on stream. I'll do this where everyone can see my pro strats for these mini games. So with guitar, you mute it. You mute it and you just click on the circles. And don't even worry about it. Yeah, the best way to play the music game is muted. Silent Hill Ascension. The rhythm game is best played with no sound. Just mute it. Put on something else. And just click the circles. Yeah, there is there is no rhythm. It doesn't ruin the music. <laughs> oh, it's the actual chords? Yeah, they try to put the chords and stuff over here to try to show like how to play the songs. But as somebody who has been a musician for a long time and played a lot of these songs, knows how to play a lot of this on guitar, um, they're not always correct. In fact, there's a lot of it that's, that's not correct. So it does put chords up there, but those chords are not, they're not reflected in the tablature of this. Like the circles don't always correspond to that, like what the chord would be if it was trying to do like tabs or something. Or they wind up being completely wrong. It's just not the correct chord for how to play the song um, based on how it is on the soundtrack or how Yamaoka typically plays it. They're not going to go through all the trouble to see which chords are which. I mean, if you had a musician helping you with this, like, if, if you made this into a real game, or hell, even if this was not actually so much a game as just like, here, learn how to play some of your favorite Silent Hill songs on guitar. And it was just tabs and chords and like teaching you to play the songs. That would be kind of neat. That would be kind of neat. Uh, it's not. It's click the circle. Nothing else matters. The chords aren't correct. The circles aren't correct. It's not on rhythm with the song or anything.
Oh, perfect. End of Small Sanctuary. Love this song. Oh my god. Mute. There we go. We're playing End of Small Sanctuary. That requires you have to pay someone? I mean, they've already got fucking Kevin Key from Necoface on the team doing music and shit for him. I'm sure he knows the chords to these songs. <laughs> he could have put the correct, like, chords and tablature there. Or at least... The thing is, you don't need an expert to come in and tell you that this is not good. Like, this is not acceptable as a minigame. This is tap the circle and ruin Silent Hill music. The fact that someone made this, several people probably, made this, and other people, multiple people, would have had to have looked at it and said, this is fine. People had to test this. People had to QA this and say, this is fine. If this were in a commercial, they'd make the person hold the phone and play it like a guitar. Yeah. Does anyone remember um, when they made Guitar Hero for like DS? And there was like, you'd put the, there was like a, a part that went into the Game Boy Advance slot on the original DS that had the guitar like buttons on it. And then you'd hold it in one hand and use the stylus in your other hand to like strum across the touch screen. Hell yeah. Look at them points. All right, we've done what we can to affect these characters' hope. Let's do some stones. Get our points together. Let's open the rest of our boxes. And we'll just have all these points ready. Whoops. For next time, we need to get some boxes to play what's in the box. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. I'm gonna lose. Haven't seen this one yet? My god, really? I mean, you're better off the more uninformed you are, Star Garden. The less you know and experience when it comes to Ascension, the better. Because, yeah, this is it. This is it. I don't want to do this. Used to enjoy Bejeweled on NubZombie.com, but it's not there anymore. That was just for the beta. That was just a beta. Hirimi's at hard at work uh, to program and, and create some games for the NubZombie.com experience. All right, let's open our six remaining boxes. Let's do some more what's in the box and call it a day. I don't want to deal with those puzzles right now. I'm going to save them for later when I'm on the toilet. I think all my moderators are busy. So give me a second to open up this.
Here we go. What's in the box? Prediction has started. Use your scam points to predict what you think is going to be in this next gift box, this loot crate, the Silent Hill loot box, because that's the world we live in now. Silent Hill has loot boxes. It's official. We're in the worst timeline. 20,000. 20,800 scam points on cosmetic. People very confident. Throwing a lot of points around here towards cosmetics. 3,250 towards sticker emojis. 7,290 towards art and flair. 230 points on duplicate item. Looks like most people are thinking this is a cosmetic. 8,290 points on art and flair. 8,350 on sticker emoji. What's in the box? It was a cosmetic. It was a cosmetic. The rare facial hair, gray faint. Twenty-three thousand three hundred and eighty points were put towards that forty thousand point three k scam points, going out to Thanatos and six others. Very well done. Great job on those predictions. Oh, one of my moderators got the next one. Thank you, whoever got that. Next prediction. Next prediction is open now. Wager your scam points. What's in the box? Will it be a sticker, emoji? Will it be another cosmetic? A piece of art or flair? Or a duplicate item? 20,400... 20,970 on duplicate. Someone's putting a lot of points towards duplicate. 4,000 on sticker emoji. 1,200 on art flair. Only 110 points on cosmetic. 4,000 on sticker emoji. 1,600 now on cosmetic. 2,100 on art flare. 21,390. 410. 21,440 on, on duplicate item. I think that was. What is in the box? It's Art Flair, a rare frame aqua. The glowy blue frame. Art and Flair. Look at that blue square. What a wonderful reward from my loot box. Yeah, a square. All you ever needed. All you could have ever wanted. 31.2 thousand scam points going out to Tanoshi and three others. 20,000. Nice, Tanoshi. Tanoshi this. Yeah, it'll go great with the legendary white banner. <laughs> <laughs> where it's it's you are you referring to my my epic ice gradient or whatever the fuck it was <laughs> yeah all right next prediction is open use those scam points use your brain cells what do you think will be in the next silent hill ascension loot crate Will it be a sticker or an emoji? Will it be a cosmetic? A piece of art or flair or a duplicate item? 24,000 scam points currently on duplicate item. 10 scam points on art and flair. 3,900 on cosmetics. 8,320 on sticker emoji. 24,000 on duplicate. A lot of points saying duplicate. 
What's in the next scam box? It's art and flair. The rare loading screen arcane library. It's more art and flair. Absolutely incredible. The double art flair. Back to back. Thirty-eight thousand going to knocked and two others. Who correctly predicted that one? Only three people correctly correctly guessed we'd get the art flair twice in a row. All right. We still got some boxes. Next prediction, open. Next box, what's in it? Stickers, cosmetics, art, duplicates. Wager your scam points. Channel your psychic powers, use your instincts. What is in the box? What's up, Royal Jawline? How has the game been treating you so far, Nub? Uh, it makes my brain feel like it's melting out of my nose. It's one of the worst things I've ever had the misfortune of experiencing, and I'm glad we've got a fun community here on Twitch that uh, can try and have some fun anyway. All right, 12,300 on stickers emoji, 3,500 on cosmetic, 2,100 on art flare, 3,800 on duplicate. Here we go. What's in the box? It's... It's... An uncommon emoji, Astrid. Sticker emoji. Imagine this travesty in a boxing match with Book of Memories. Multiple people have been making this comment, and I have to multiple times per day, per week, inform people. This is the worst. It's not even close. Book of Memories, the Pachi slot, the mobile games, anything else in the Silent Hill franchise that you can name, this is the worst thing, and it's not even close. Ascension is not even close to, like, Book of Memories or Silent Hill Revelations or the Pachi slot. I would much rather sit and play the Pachi slot every day <laughs> for for six to eight months or whatever than, than experience Ascension every day for that same amount of time. As much as I hated Book of Memories, I would much rather deal with Book of Memories for two to three hours a day for the same run of time as Ascension. All right, prediction is about to end. What's in the box? 14,000 saying duplicate, 15,000 points on sticker emoji, 6,000 on cosmetic. A lot of points on this one. Next box. What's in it? Cosmetic. It's a duplicate though. It's a duplicate. The uncommon avatar hair black sweat back duplicate. The dupe. The dupe. 14,000 and 90 scam points. Correctly predicted duplicate. 35.5 thousand scam points going to It's Steve O Crew and two others. Congrats to the three of you on your correct prediction on duplicate.
We still got one more box. One more, one more round of what's in the box before we call it a night. Final chance to use your scam points. And then we'll go raid somebody. So if, you, uh, if you're broke and you need some extra scam points, stick around for the channel raid. You will get some, uh, some extra points for joining us when we raid someone else. So keep that in mind. But final prediction, it is now open. What's in the box? Final box of the day. 7,300 on sticker emoji. 7,800 on sticker emoji. 1,600 on cosmetic. 2,300 on art flare. 681 on duplicate. Everyone's being a little more conservative with their points this time around. 8,000 on sticker emoji. 1,800 on cosmetic. 4,300 on art flare. Inching up there, a thousand, a little over a thousand on duplicate item now. 8,700 on sticker emoji. 15,800 on cosmetic. Someone just dropped a lot. And there it is. Predictions are in. Final box of the day. What's in the box? Sticker emoji. It's an uncommon emoji. Wanderer happy. Look at that happy smiling testicle. Is that a prisoner? A prisoner? What do you mean a prisoner? This is a wanderer. This is the the Silent Hill Ascension monster that looks basically identical to a lying figure, except it has barbed wire on it. But congrats. Sticker emoji was the correct prediction for the final box of the day. 30.2 thousand scam points going to Thanatus and 10 others. Congrats, everyone. Congrats, everyone. Yeah, sorry, Brad was in the way. But thanks to everyone who participated. If I have a serious question about Silent Hill and its community, can I ask? Uh, yeah, Tanoshi, go ahead, since we're, we're about to wrap up the stream. Uh, and for the future, we do have a Discord. Uh, exclamation point discord there's a link to it right there in chat in that discord i've got a silent hill questions uh channel so specifically if people want to ask things about a silent hill game since it's probably not going to be what i'm playing during a stream i might not be able to answer chat if i'm like doing an in-depth on ascension i'm not going to take my time and go and answer like silent hill 2 questions for example so if you have questions about stuff like that, you can join the Discord, put your questions in the Silent Hill questions channel, and uh, and I can do my best to answer them. But yeah, like right now, we're just we're just chilling here, so we're about to wrap up and go raid somebody. Claim our dailies. Uh, what do you think about Silent Hill in the current years? Do you think it still has a serious future? I mean, you're obviously the most engaged person I can think about in the franchise, and like everybody, I want Silent Hill to be recognized to its fullest. But this entry, Ascension, feels again like a stab in the back. Um, personally, I think at, at this point, there's not really any going back there we're not going to get silent hill silent hill the way that it was understood when it was created by team silent is long since forgotten people who are going to be involved with silent hill going forward um they they're not aiming to make the same thing 
the Silent Hill is is something else now. The and it's not even the developer's fault. Like you can't don't like you can't put this on Genvid, you can't put this on Bluber team. This is on Konami. The Konami executives and the overall producer of the franchise, Matoyo Okamoto, um, they have already been public and expressed that Silent Hill going forward is not meant to take, like, they don't want it to take place in the town of Silent Hill anymore. They're doing away with the concept that Silent Hill, as a location, um, as a central point for the story of these games, is no longer relevant. It's about monsters, it's about other worlds, it's about trauma, and it's basically just been boiled down to trauma simulators. Um, it's no longer about deep, metaphorical, psychological horror. It's, it's like bottom of the barrel. Don't think about it, you know, don't, don't think about the, um, the reason for the other world. Don't think about the meaning behind the monsters. Just there's monsters, there's fog, you know, don't, don't think about the fact that it's not in the town of Silent Hill. It's just nebulous it's nothing anymore it's whatever so i i don't think silent hill as long as konami intends for that to be the direction for the franchise it doesn't matter what team you've got developing a game it doesn't matter if it's outsourced or if it's an internal development team or anything like that silent hill is not silent hill anymore it's something entirely different. The name Silent Hill is still attached to it for marketing purposes, but there is no meaning to that name being attached. Like, it doesn't even take place in the town of Silent Hill anymore. So. It's it's one, it's something that to a certain degree, I've, I've accepted as a Silent Hill fan a long time ago because the series has taken a shift in direction ever since Origins, ever since Team Silent disbanded. So since 2006, ever since Origins, ever since the first movie, um, the series has kind of been like this, where everything is trying to recreate Silent Hill 2, and the only thing that, that people seem to look at from Silent Hill 2 is like the very surface level stuff. The everybody perceives reality differently aspect, which was a unique thing for Silent Hill 2, but was not a thing for like Silent Hill 1, 3, or 4. So those sorts of aspect, the character with amnesia who did a bad thing, uh, the unreliable narrator dialogue, the, you know, that type of stuff. Everything has just been copying sort of that Silent Hill 2 aspect over and over and over. Origins tried to do it. Uh, Homecoming tried to do it. Downport tried to do it. And um, again, as a Silent Hill fan who really, really loved the first four games... I've recognized that the franchise has gone down a very different direction um, post Silent Hill 4. Even kind of starting with Silent Hill 4, but 4 was still a lot of the original team just experimenting with some new ideas and, and things like that. It really went off the rails with the first movie and with Origins. And the entire feel, the entire driving force, the source of creativity behind Team Silence, Silent Hill, um, ended with Team Silent. And the only thing people have really tried to do afterwards is redo Silent Hill 2. Character with amnesia, you know, or character with troubled past that is revealed over the course of the story, who may or may not have done something bad, you know, and is dealing with the trauma 
of their their previous actions. Silent Hill being this sort of therapist town that custom tailors uh, monsters based on your your trauma whenever you go there. You know, that idea of Silent Hill is where the series was. And now that's been even further. When I say where the series was, I mean, after Silent Hill 4. That was sort of the, the idea of where they wanted to go with it from Origins onward. Now we're in an entirely new generation of Silent Hill games coming out. So we can kind of split up the Silent Hill franchise into like three generations. There's the Team Silent generation. So first four games. The way that Team Silent wrote those games, designed those games, the, the music, the atmosphere was fairly consistent. Like they had an idea for what they wanted to do and they did it. Um, then you have the, we'll call it the Hewlett generation. Origins, Homecoming, Shattered Memories, and Downpour, and Book of Memories. Everything while Tom Hewlett was the overall uh, producer for the franchise. So then you've got that generation, which is the series of games of developers who thought they understood Silent Hill 2 enough to recreate it and, and do their attempt at a Silent Hill 2-esque story. Um, so that was where everything sort of deviated and was just trying to copy what was previously the most successful, um, without a good fundamental understanding of why Silent Hill 2 was so enjoyed by so many people. Um, because it wasn't initially, it took people a few years to really come around on Silent Hill 2 before it kind of became the cult classic that it is today. Um, it, it took a lot of people playing it and replaying it and kind of looking at it in context to get it. And a lot of the people who were trying to copy the formula of Silent Hill 2 for like Origins onward through Book of Memories, um, didn't get it. They weren't the people who, who played it enough to really deeply understand what was so special about Silent Hill 2 and even amongst the Team Silent games, why Team Silent was so specifically different about how they made Silent Hill 2 compared to like one or three or four. Um, and now we've got the new generation. Now we have the Okamoto generation. So we had the original Team Silent generation, we had the Hewlett generation, now we've got the Okamoto generation. So everything that's coming out with Matoi Okamoto as producer. So this is the guy who says Silent Hill doesn't need to be in Silent Hill. You know, Resident Evil doesn't always take place in Raccoon City. So why can't Silent Hill happen anywhere in the world? The guy with that mentality, that fundamental misunderstanding of Silent Hill, is the, the producer in charge of where all the announced games now, you know, that's the direction they're all going in. Which is why Ascension takes place in Pennsylvania and Norway, and there hasn't been a single mention of Silent Hill. Um, any of the new games are probably going to be like that as well. We don't have more information on stuff like Townfall yet. Uh, we know that F is going to be set in Japan, so it's another you know, Silent Hill, but not in Silent Hill type of game. Um, because again, that's just where the producer wants the franchise to go. It's where Konami wants the franchise to go. So that's going to be the theme. That's, that's why Ascension is the way that it is. That's probably going to affect how Townfall is. The only thing that's going to be even remotely similar to classic Silent Hill is going to be Silent Hill 2 Remake. And it's not going to feel like Silent Hill 2. It's not going, it'll, it'll on a very surface level resemble Silent Hill 2, but it's going to be through the eyes uh, and with the, let's say, creative changes of Bloober Team. And again, I don't feel that Bloober Team will 
understand a lot of the, the depth and nuance of Silent Hill 2 to such a degree that the remake will feel justified. Was 4 in Silent Hill? 4 physically, no. Took 4 took place in South Ashfield, which was about a half day's drive away from Silent Hill. Uh, Walter Sullivan was from Silent Hill, though. And his corpse was basically full of Silent Hill magic for having perf being in the process of performing the 21 sacraments. There's a note that you find very, very early on in Silent Hill 4 where they tell you Walter Sullivan is performing two rituals. He's, he's performing one where he has to kill 10 people and take their hearts. And then he's performing another one called the 21 Sacraments, where after he kills the first 10 people, he kills himself, and then he kills another 10 people. That gives you your full 21 Sacraments. So after killing the first 10 people, and then killing himself, Walter Sullivan basically becomes a ghost with the power of Silent Hill. And his corpse is in the wall of room 302. So the power of Silent Hill is there. It's explained why things are happening outside of the town. It all still ties back to the town itself through Walter. And you still visit recreations of Silent Hill. You don't physically go there, but you go to Walter's memories, Walter's world, his, his version of these locations in Silent Hill, the orphanage, uh, Wish House orphanage, um, the, the water prison. Those are not you teleporting to Silent Hill. That is you going into Walter's created world. So again, Silent Hill 4 does not take place in Silent Hill. The first half of Silent Hill 3 does not take place in Silent Hill. You can do Silent Hill things outside of Silent Hill. That's not necessarily the issue here. Um, what you can't do is just set the story in Norway and have the other world and have the monsters with absolutely no explanation. You can't just take it and throw it anywhere and just say there's monsters here, there's fog here, there's other world here now and not give a reason for it. Silent Hill 3 gave you a reason why you're not in Silent Hill in the first half of the game. And then once that is revealed, you go to Silent Hill and the rest of the game is in Silent Hill. Silent Hill 4, you're not in Silent Hill, but you're going to Walter's memories of it. Everything as far as the story, the characters, all revolves around Silent Hill. And even though you might not physically be going there, you're going through places that are recreations of locations based on Walter's memories of them. Even Homecoming. Homecoming, you're in Shepherd's Glen, right on the other side of Toluca Lake from Silent Hill. They explain what the ritual was, what their, their branch of the cult was trying to do, why that ritual failed, and why Silent Hill things started happening in Shepherd's Glen. As bad as Homecoming is, as badly written as Homecoming is, it still explains that. Like, that's the thing. You can have stuff outside. You can have Silent Hill stories take place outside of Silent Hill. That inherently is not the problem. The problem is that we are nearly a month in to Silent Hill Ascension's story, and there is no Silent Hill. There is no reference to it, there is no mention to it, there is no tie-in to it, there is no... the foundation saying in the old days, back before, you know, when it was the Order, you know, none of that. There's no reason, because that's not the mentality that the company has. That's not the mentality that Konami has and that the producers have for Silent Hill as a franchise. They're on record as stating, like, we don't want Silent Hill to be in the town of Silent Hill anymore. Does the producer and creative director know and not care or is ignorant of the canon? Uh, 
probably a combination of both. I imagine there's probably some level of understanding of the pre-established games, but probably not enough of it to really affect the series direction. But even if they are aware of those games, that's clearly not the direction they want to go with it. They're they're ignoring purposefully uh, established lore from the original games because they want to try and experiment and do new things with these new games. But I don't know. They to me, they might as well not even be related. This this may as well just be Konami announcing an entirely new horror franchise and just call it something else. Just call it Noisy Mountain or whatever the fuck. But it's not Silent Hill. It doesn't take place in Silent Hill. None of the characters are from Silent Hill. No one has even said the words Silent Hill, like not even the most remote mention of it. So why even have this as part of it other than to sell it? It's just a marketing thing. It is just Silent Hill slapped onto a completely unrelated project for the sake of marketing it better. It's not selling. Marketing. Marketing. It's their attempt to sell it better. This is a flop no matter what you called it. You could call this free $10,000 to your bank account and a free blowjob if you push the button. You could title it whatever the fuck you want. It's still a flop. As long as it is still this. It's a flop. It doesn't matter what you fucking call it. The title is just marketing. Isn't the name of the town Silent Valley in Fin... It, it, it's uh, Norwegian. Stildalen in Norway is, is Silent Valley. So again, still not Silent Hill. <laughs> not even in name only. All right. I'm done. I'm done ranting. We're going to go raid. Let's go raid somebody. Let's, let's raid somebody I don't know. Every once in a while I try and do this. So I'm not sure who this is, but they're playing Silent Hill 2. So we're gonna support the Silent Hill community. We're gonna go raid Cunning Lynx. Says they're doing a casual, a casual stroll through Silent Hill 2 today, and uh, they've only got about 20 people watching them. So go show them some love. Uh, hopefully they're cool. Like I said, I don't know who this is. I've never seen them before. So hopefully they're cool. And uh, yeah. I will be back tomorrow, even though there is not a new episode of Ascension. We're still gonna do. Uh, we're still gonna be doing our Saturday in-depth story recap for the week. So I'll see you all tomorrow for a story recap of 
everything Ascension from the last two weeks. And then uh, I will not be here Sunday, but I will be back Monday for the next new episode of Ascension and Dev Pre and Post Show. So I'll see you all tomorrow for the recap. Till then, see you next time. Be good to each other. Much love and peace. <laughs>